Let's just remind everybody off script about what, you know, you have a patient with pancreatic <clears throat> cancer, um, they somehow get diagnosed by a scan done for some reason. What's the proper staging for this disease? What, what testing are you doing for, to baseline? So at baseline, uh, we do a, I think if you're saying imaging, we do a CT scan, or a pancreatic protocol CT scan in which we look at the vessel. So I think in pancreatic cancer patients always ask about staging. I think the big thing in pancreatic cancer is again, the association with the blood vessels. So a good it CT, is, is that good where everybody CD. is? MRs along, along or no? Along with an endoscopic ultrasound. EUS mm -hmm. usually, particularly for head masses, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they usually get it for a biopsy and everything for, for diagnosis, so I think that's Often a, it's not risk. enough for molecular profiling, so, but it sometimes is. But so molecular profiling is mostly the data that we have is in the metastatic setting. Fair so enough. I think the resectable setting, we really still don't have the data to say that we really maybe should be doing molecular profiling because it's mostly in the if metastatic setting. If it was your setting. cancer, would you want to know? Uh, actually, frankly, no. I okay, think, I think if it's resectable, I want to know. resectable, no. I wouldn't do molecular profiling you know, on the tumor. So just, just to throw it in there, yeah. we, we do CT and I do chest as well yeah. to look for metastasis. CT chest, yeah. Um, but, the, but there's a growing value to doing PET scans. Yeah. And we don't do them routinely, and I don't think insurance will pay for them routinely. Right. But there's more and more evidence showing that it's actually a good predictor for response to therapy. Yeah, you just got me an 800 yeah. call into Aetna to get that approved, <laughs> right? Uh, and so we don't do it outside of clinical trials, but we're doing some trials. We're actually using that as one of the markers to suggest but whether... But it's a standard you're saying... I, I don't think it's a standard care. And then let's say you have that little ditzel there or here. There's always something on the liver that you can't really tell what it is, that lung nodule. Is that a deal breaker, or you go further? Is that when you get your pet? So we get MRI. I mean, MRIs are, are really what we use for, for the, the liver, liver yeah. I think. And that's where most of the questions come up. So CT, EUS, blood testing. We get a baseline 19.9. Is everybody doing some sort of tumor marker routinely? Yes. Yeah. And CEA? And we, we, we do, and we, uh, I don't know if other experiences are, or surgeons see some inherent value in the C19-9 cut off over 1,000. Yeah. I'm not sure where that but that seems to be an additional piece that, you know, even that if it's They want to give chemo then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, then they're more inclined. Yeah, so. I well, think even, even lower than that. I mean, if you look at even like a 300 cutoff or something, again, everybody's different. So I, but I do think if you have a CN99 of, you know, anything north of, you know, 180. So most of the trials, you know, actually cut it, you know, adjuvant trials that are there did not allow patients to go on with a higher CA99. Hence, maybe they had better survival than our regular pancreatic cancer patients. So I think it's uh, it's fairly important, but really, if you have a really high CA99, you're really looking at systemic disease. You know, the ones who are in the thousands, that's, you know, there is some evidence of systemic disease. You just cannot see it at that Back time. pain, high CA99, these are bad markers. Allison, so I think this whole discussion is easiest with some sort of borderline tumor uh, because it's easy to make the choice to get to chemotherapy right, first. Right, so right. give me a little sense about what you guys are doing outside of a clinical trial in somebody with a borderline resectable tumor. So, you know, we determined borderline or not based on the, the, uh, the intersection between the tumor and the, the fat planes around the major arteries. And if it's clear in the celiac, the SMA, the hepatic artery, they go right to surgery. If, if it's not, not that, and it's not metastatic, it's borderline, mm -hmm. and we are treating first with chemotherapy, mostly using fulfirinox, and followed by radiation. Um, if we had, we had the um, Alliance study open, so we enrolled to that, but that just closed. Uh, so, so it's chemo for a few months? How, how long are you doing? Three months. It? Three months. And then yes. what kind of radiation are you, are you doing? Is this SBRT? Is it uh, so short course? So most longer? patients go for SBRT if we yeah. can get it approved. Yeah. If not, then we do a short course. Um, but we, most of our patients can get, we can get SBRT approved. You got to get a proton. That's the only way to go. I, we just proton <laughs> everything. You just sit in there. I proton my lunch <clears throat> when it's cold. <laughs> But Nowadays, you, you mentioned the alliance. I mean, the the SBRT arm closed because of because there lack was not, of yeah. evidence of benefit. Yeah, and, so and but you know again, well, it there, triggered you know, a futility, but it didn't. Yeah, but there are nuances towards that. Obviously, about like different you know different uh, sites and everything. Is everybody giving the same you know quality kind of SBRT and everything? But again, I think the radiation question is a very 
you know, it's, it's a debatable question. Uh, is it right automatic? Now. Let me kind of interrupt. So, you know, often you do your three months, six cycles of it's chemo, you do another scan. Our, our responses are so good with fulfurinox, it's not automatic. So if they look they at get, that point that yes. you're, you go to the OR, right. if they're still maybe borderline, um, that's a patient that you might do some radiation? Right. Is that fair? Correct, okay. yes. So it's sort of a stepwise. Does that patient then go to the OR for exploration, even in the absence of, say, regression? Um, I mean, it depends on a lot of factors. So I think that's where the multidisciplinary yes really no. tumor board comes out. No, it's it's, it's really it's, that's very that's a very specific patient related go. question. <laughs> Which surgery? You know yeah. what you've done with the CN99 if that's dipped. So well, if my somebody point being is that we think about it, right? So right. It's, you might say in the end no, but we, we, if, even in the absence of a response, I think we've all seen these scenarios where when you go in there, when the surgeon goes in there, it actually is much freer from the vessels than the imaging told us. And so I thought my only point there is that that's not unreasonable right. to explore that patient. But, but is there is fair? a lot of potential risk in that yeah. surgery. Yeah. And so the, so for all the good cases where you go in and it's clear, yeah. you have to remember there's, these are patients who are doing well with chemotherapy and may have months, if not years, of survival and go in and have a surgery and, and lose that. Yeah. Well, just that there is also the timing issue of radiation and um, surgery, that there is a window during which time after radiation. So I think it is important to strategize when you pull the trigger for doing radiation, if you're gonna do radiation, understanding that you're gonna to need to, if you're gonna ever explore the patient, that it's gonna to have to come within a window. And so you need, you wanna be close um, to a potential resection. And then to, I, I would say we would want to explore the patient even if you don't see um, a clear change because we, we, there's clear evidence that what you see on a scan is, is not necessarily what you think. And I completely agree with that, you're right. I mean, the scans can be fairly deceptive and when you're looking at the biology of these uh, patients with pancreatic cancer, you know, but again, you look at clinical science, how those patients are doing, how they've done on the chemo, as you're, if you had to see a 99 to follow, if that's dipped, then you have much more confidence in going in and, you know, looking at those patients uh, surgically. So there, you know, it's you kind of use all these other parameters that you're trying to use to judge who can go or not.